So in a previous video, and by the way, there'll be a link to that video in the comments below this post, I talked a little bit about how you enable the analysis tool pack and you can use it to do summary statistics and to create a correlation matrix. The subject of this short tutorial is what is correlation? I mean, at least from an intuitive perspective, if you use Excel to analyze data, how could correlation potentially be helpful for you? So what we can see here is that I'm in Excel and I have the IRIS data set from R loaded up as a table. And if you're not familiar with the IRIS data set, it doesn't really matter for this quick tutorial. Just know that I have four columns of numeric data here and a column of categorical data, string data. Okay, so at base, what is correlation? Correlation essentially at an intuitive level is the association between two numeric columns of data in an Excel table, and essentially how close do the data align to each other? And the easiest way to think about this at an intuitive conceptual level is with a data visualization. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick columns C and D, these are two columns of numeric data, or in other terminology, these are two numeric features or two numeric variables. And what we wanna do is kind of analyze how much do they have in common in terms of their relationship as they increase values. Do, if one gets bigger, does the other one also get bigger? That means that there's a certain level of correlation. And that can be embodied as a single number. There's a calculation for it, but we don't really care because we're gonna deal, deal with all of this intuitively. So I've got my two columns of data here, two features, two variables, petal.length and petal.width. And how I can visualize them real easy is with a scatter plot. So in Excel, I just hop up to here to the charts. I'm in the insert part of the ribbon. And you can see this little chart here with a bunch of dots on it. So I'm just gonna pick a scatter plot. And you can see here, I get a handy dandy little scatter plot. And it's got a bunch of chart junk on it, so I'm just gonna get rid of this crap. I don't want any of that. And what we can see here is on the x-axis here, the horizontal, we're gonna have petal.length, and on the y-axis, we're gonna have petal.width. I'm not gonna bother putting the axes on these because we know what they are. I'm just gonna get rid of that because it's a little bit distracting. And what we can see here is the intersection of each one of these rows of data produces a point, a scatter plot. And you can see here that generally speaking, we got a cluster down here, and we got a bunch of points up here. And if we kind of eyeball it, we can see, we can imagine a line going up from the lower left part of the visualization up to the top right part of the visualization. But we can embody this idea of correlation even more plainly by using a handy dandy feature of Excel called the trend line. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. So I'm just gonna click it. And you can see here, I get a nice little dotted line that represents the trend. Now, just to give you a preview of coming attractions, this line right here, this dotted line that you see going from the lower left to the top right, is actually a simple linear regression model. Don't let that scare you. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this tutorial. But in case you're curious, that's what it is. And what this essentially does is it gives us a visualization cue for us to understand the base concept of correlation, which is how close in general are all of these dots to the dotted line here, the trend line, the simple linear regression model. The closer these dots are to this upward sloping line, the closer it's going to get to what's known as perfect positive correlation. So if all of the dots were exactly on this upward sloping line, if every dot was duh, 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 on it, then we would have perfect positive correlation and we would get a score, a correlation score of 1.0, which is the maximum value. And what that tells you is a very important conceptual idea. And that is this, based on the data that we have, and that's always the caveat here, right? Based on the data that we have, the closer to perfect correlation that we have, in this case, it's positive because it's going upwards from left to right. The closer we are to perfect correlation, the easier it is for us to use the values on the x-axis, in this case, pedal length, to predict accurately, maybe even perfectly, 
the values on the y-axis, in this case, pedal dot width. So what this line tells us right here is that if the dots are all on there, we can perfectly predict pedal width, the y-axis, from pedal length, the x-axis. That's what we can do perfectly if all the dots were on the line. In this case, the dots are not all on the line, but they're pretty close, which means that there's a good predictive relationship based on this data, based on this data, for predicting one of the columns from the other. And generally speaking, you can actually flip them back and forth. It doesn't really matter which one's on the x-axis and which one's on the y-axis. But generally speaking, you tend to think of predicting the y from the x, but you can flip them, it doesn't matter. So this is an example of a very interesting relationship in your data. So let's go ahead and create another visualization so we can see a different kind of relationship. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick sepal width and pedal length as my two numeric columns. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to insert. I'm gonna insert a scatter chart here. And, whoops, move that over here. And I'm gonna get rid of the chart junk again because I don't like it. I just don't like it at all. I'm gonna scroll over a little bit. And we can see some dots, and it's a little more complicated. Once again, I'm just gonna add the trend line. And what we can see here now is that the line goes from the top left to the bottom right. So it's downward sloping. Over here, we were upward sloping, positive correlation. Over here, we're seeing negative correlation because we're going downwards. So these correlation numbers, these correlation statistics, these correlation calculations, values, go from negative one to one, inclusive, negative one to one. So one, positive one, would be all the dots on this line right here going upwards. That would be perfect positive correlation with a score of 1.0. If all the dots were on this line going downwards like this, you'd have perfect negative correlation or negative one. Now, here's the great thing about correlation. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, at least from a prediction perspective. The closer you are to one or negative one, the better your quality of predictions are going to be. Now, if you're trying to analyze the relationship between two things, then obviously whether it's positive or negative matters. But in a pure predictive analytics scenario, you can work with either one, it doesn't matter. Now, you can see here that the dots, just looking at the data here, right? So you can see the line and you can see the dots, they're much farther away in general from this dotted line than we see over here. So what we would expect is in terms of absolute values, right? Remove the negative sign, don't think about that for a second. The absolute value, this is gonna be closer to one over here on the left than this is going to be on the right. And the easiest way for us to check that is with a correlation matrix using the mighty analysis tool pack. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick all four numeric columns, go to data in the ribbon, click on data analysis, Oops, I didn't gonna do that again, my bad. A through D, and I do have labels in my first row, so I need to check that. And I wanna spit the output out in this worksheet, so I'm just gonna highlight K19 here and have it spit out a correlation matrix for me. And what we can see here are the actual numeric calculations of this value here, of these data, of these, <laughs> excuse me, these four numeric columns of data, two relationships of which we have demonstrated here in our visuals. Now what we have here is a very high correlation, right? This is, um, this to remind you, this was pedal length on the x-axis and pedal width on the y-axis. And we saw that this was pretty close to the dotted line. So should we, we should have a high correlation number. And in fact, that's exactly what we see at 0.96, that graphical relationship represented as a number. And over here we have sepal width and pedal length. So we have sepal width and pedal length, and you can see that, in fact, it's negative as we would expect, and it's only at 0.428, because we know that the dots are more splayed out than what we saw on this chart on the left. Okay, there you have it. A real quick introduction to correlation and how it's useful for you as an Excel-based data analyst. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. Until next time, stay healthy and happy data sleuthing.